In growing strict anaerobes, there is a need to exclude air during medium preparation and culture transfer. When you're not working in the anaerobic chamber, this is done under a stream of oxygen-free gas. And this stream of oxygen-free gas is supplied by a gassing station apparatus. The main components of a gassing station are a tank with a regulator, some type of tubing to carry the gas, a heated column filled with reduced copper to remove contaminating oxygen, and the gassing probe for endpoint delivery. I'm going to talk briefly about the components of the gassing station and how to turn on and turn off a simple gassing station. I'll also briefly discuss some safety precautions you should take when working with these types of systems. The source of gas will be a gas cylinder. Commonly used gases in a lab that does anaerobic work are nitrogen, a mix of 80% nitrogen and 20% CO2, and an 80-20 mix of hydrogen and CO2. We purchase pre-mixed gases, but you can make your own mix with a gas proportionator. A regulator is used to control the pressure coming out of the gas tank. Cylinder regulators require an inlet cylinder valve fitting that must be compatible with the mating fitting on the cylinder valve. Cylinder regulators are often supplied with an outlet valve. And this provides a means to isolate the regulator and cylinder from downstream equipment. In the simplest form of gassing station, the regulator hand knob is where you control the pressure of your system. Gas tanks are safe to work with as long as you follow a few simple precautions. Always use a tank cart to transport cylinders. Never move a tank without its cap on. The tank should be secured to the wall before removing the cap and attaching the regulator. Never use thread tape when attaching a regulator to a cylinder. Do a leak check with a dilute soap solution. Bubbles indicate an improperly sealed connection. There are some special precautions to note when working with flammable gases such as hydrogen. Cylinder valves have reverse thread to attach to the regulator. You tighten these types of regulators by turning in a counterclockwise direction. When flammable gas is used, a potential flashback to the cylinder exists in the event of fire. To protect against flashback, a flash arrestor must be installed. And of course, you should avoid open flames. It is recommended that you avoid using pure hydrogen. It is less expensive, but more dangerous, especially when used with an anaerobic chamber. The next component of the gassing station is an oxygen scrubbing column. The heated copper-filled column removes contaminating oxygen from the gas supply. It consists of large copper tubing, approximately 25 millimeters in diameter, filled with copper filings, or copper metal light turnings. Copper in this form provides a large amount of surface area. The end caps and tubing are attached with silver solder or some other type of solder that can withstand high temperature. The column is wrapped with a flexible heating tape that is suitable for use on metal at high temperatures and then covered with insulation. The temperature is controlled by a rheostat. Here we have two columns for two separate gassing stations wrapped with a single heating tape. The copper inside is reduced by running hydrogen or a hydrogen gas mix through the heated column. Oxygen that is in the gas supply will react with the reduced copper and be eliminated as water. There are special precautions that must be taken the first time the column is reduced. The reduction of copper with hydrogen is an exothermic reaction so caution must be used where the copper inside can heat up and fuse. If this happens, the column can become clogged or the gas path can be greatly reduced. This reduces the amount of surface area where the reaction of oxygen with the reduced copper occurs and lessens the efficiency of the column to remove oxygen. After the column, heating tape and insulation are assembled, connect it to a rheostat and flush with nitrogen for two to three minutes. Adjust the rheostat until the column is warm to the touch. 
began to pass hydrogen or a hydrogen mix at a low flow rate through the column. Make sure the room is well ventilated and combust the hydrogen as it exits with a flame. After the copper inside has been completely reduced, insert a thermometer between the column and the heating tape. Adjust the rheostat slowly to give a temperature of approximately 180 degrees. Once the column is set to the correct temperature, the rheostat will not need to be readjusted as long as no components are changed. The final part of the gassing station, where gas exits the system, is the gassing probe. The gassing probe supplies a stream of gas for flushing out tubes, bottles, or syringes. A gassing probe usually consists of an autoclavable 2 mil glass syringe barrel packed with cotton or glass wool attached to a bent 17 gauge stainless steel needle. The bent needles are not commercially available, so you need to make your own with a 17 gauge by 4 inch long pipetting needle. Grasp the hub of the needle with a pair of pliers. Heat the needle up just above the hub until it is red hot. and then bend around a curved surface. To flush out syringes aseptically, a sterile gassing probe is mounted in a two-prong clamp and the needle is flamed. Use a valve or a pinch clamp to close off the lines to the gassing probes when not in use. This prevents air from entering the system and oxidizing the column. The last thing I want to talk about is how to start up and shut down a simple gassing station. Before using the gassing station, it is important to reduce the column. And this is especially important if your gas contains contaminating oxygen or someone has forgotten to close the clamp or valve at the gassing probe after use. Begin by opening the nitrogen cylinder valve. Open this valve all the way. Next, open the regulator outlet valve. Next, open the valve or pinch clamp on the gassing probe line and purge the system with nitrogen for a minute. After the system has been flushed with nitrogen to remove air, you are now ready to reduce the column. Shut off the nitrogen cylinder and switch to hydrogen or a hydrogen mix at a slow flow rate. Let it flush with hydrogen for a few minutes to reduce the column. For safety reasons, remain at the gassing station to ensure that none of your lab mates uses an open flame in the area. After you have reduced the column, turn off the hydrogen and switch to the gas you need to use. Flush with this gas for a few minutes to remove any hydrogen left in the system. The gassing station is now ready for use. When done, close the valve or pinch clamp on the gassing probe line and close the gas tanks and regulators.